Okay, here we got is my sound card oscilloscope circuit here. We're going to test the ways when you get built, how to get to test it. You can do it with two different things. It'll probably the one simple one, it'll probably be use a multimeter. But it, it's not as simple as using a oscilloscope, because the oscilloscope will tell you exactly how it's working. Anyway, we'll do both on this video. Since I have a oscilloscope, and you probably don't. And that's probably why you would be using this type of circuit because you're supposed to make one out of a sound card. And this circuit here protects the sound card from higher voltages going into it. It, 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 it keeps them below a certain level. Now what you'll need is a 3.3K resistor, two of those, and two variables this is all potentiometers are also known as pots. The the five hundred kilo ohm all the resistors here and can be low wattage, any wise all will do a them. Anyway, the IO should be there should be switching ones. It pi doesn't matter but but they need to use a different kind like a like a fast recovery or the a way to electrify that diode like a 1N401 you might have some 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 this you probably have some distortion in the quality because it's slower switching diodes are fast but the thing is the switching diodes they don't go at high current ratings like a regular rectifier would, would 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 at least handle above at least at least one amp or so. And switching diodes probably can handle like what, like a hundred milliamps or maybe less, depending on what kind they are. Yeah. Anyway. And then here is a three point five mm sound jack, or it'll look like this. This is going to your line in jack. You make sure you have a computer that has a line in jack. It'll have it'll have a blue connector, a light blue connector of this that goes into it. If it has one that's mixed, you all you're not gonna have very much luck with it because I had one that's mixed and it didn't work out very well for me. Anyway, to test if the oscilloscope, we're gonna need a uh, AC AC power supply that creates AC and steps it down to a lower AC. This steps it down to 24 volts AC. I carved on the on this box here the, the left and white channels right by the knobs and stuff so I know which ones are left and white. You could probably put the tape on it and put or color or mark it so you know which ones are left or white. Or we can test it to find out. The thing is with doing it for multimeter, you're gonna have problems because the because you got these resistors here that are connected to it. These pots are connected to inner the inner connected. R1 and R2 are, are like connecting like series between the metal part and the ground. They all share the same ground. And that means if you're trying to measure from Let's say this one here, it'll go to there, 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 there. Even though it was even though it's supposed to be this one here. It's because the current will flow to the shortest path possible. Anyway. Enough said about that. Let's still test it with the oscilloscope. Now I've got it hooked up on there. Got my probe here, we're gonna connect it to the see over there. We got our white quarters, our AC step down transformer, some black quarters goes to the oscilloscope. Uh clip on to the ground here. Doesn't matter if they touch on there or not on the connector if you short them out accidentally. Cause the thing is the grass is gonna it's gonna have like three point nine no, 3.3 kilohms resistance, that limits the current down so much that it's not going to harm nothing. That's the whole idea with it. And so if you just in case you trim down the resistance on your pot, it doesn't 
when it's so low, it doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't short out and break the diodes or anything like that. So if I touch this and, you know, oh yeah, another thing is you want to make sure when you do it from the oscilloscope, which is going to be hard for me to do, because you do not want to touch the tip of it. Well, I just want to touch the tip of here. You see, it's, it's starting to do something funny, and it's picking up signal. And it, it's probably pick up a sine wave, I believe. So I touched the tip right here. As you can see, the tip is I'm touching the left channel. As you can see there, the left channel, and we're getting a signal on it. I have it swim down at a perfect sine wave. But but when you when you when this is a thing with this type of circuit, you're gonna have to mess off it in order to get it to be correct with the voltages. That is, because the thing is, if it if it's too high, it'll be, it'll be, it'll, it'll be, it'll be, it'll have a minimum of whatever you put those diodes have before the voltage drop. The diodes here have a voltage drop. The idea of the, these diodes are using four of them like this, is so that it can, so that if, it, if this is, let's say we have it, trimmed up here that divides it by that vote by this voltage of channel one and I say channel one had like six had like ten volts and we got five coming out of it out of this here we can't have that going into the sound card because it'll break it so these diodes here well, what they'll do is they'll clamp it down to 0. 0.6 since that's the maximum voltage drop of a diode or so whatever it is So this channel here, yeah, and I'll show you how far. I'll, and I don't think it matters if I'm touching it with a signal going through it, as long as there's a signal there. But really, you shouldn't be touching them because the, it's not going to shock you. It's just that it's going to make the could possibly make this measurement inaccurate. As you see there, I trim it, and see how, how it went to there, and it looks like almost like a square wave, like a curved square wave, for example. That's because of the diode effect is occurring. That's what the Navy turn turn down just white, you can see a sine wave. Now let's try channel two. Okay, I had to shut the camera off for a minute and for for a second to so I could put it down and hook it up to the next to the next uh, over here to the white channel, which is we are channel two. So if I take this. Channel two would be the one in the middle, the middle pin, which has happened. Did I just take a picture? I think I just took a picture. Anyway, enough about that. So I saw a flash on my phone, and I don't know if that ha happened. There it goes again. Yeah, I'm taking pictures because I'm tapping something here. Why am I tapping it? As you see there, there's our... On pin on middle one, she had the same effect as the other one. And also, another thing is, I also wanted to show you is that when you're measuring these signals, I told you about that. You want to make sure that when you you measure it on your oscilloscope, you measure that the folks put per division at one one volt or less, depending on how well it works on the screen. I had it on 0.5, I think, or 0.2, yeah, and the thing is, is that you don't want it to go over, when you measure on the oscilloscope, you don't want it to go over one volt, it goes over one volt, it's not working right, and it hasn't, so I've been testing it, and I've been testing it under the, the quick 
both put the raisin that show it that it's not going over a vault. In fact, I'll make it look easier. I'm just going to put it on the one volt per division. It'll be kind of tiny, but we'll still see it. As you can see there on one, for, one volt per division, it's close to one volt. It's because, yeah, it is. Because diodes have a voltage forward drop of 0.6 volts. So it almost shows almost to that top of that first square. But not quite. So that shows you that this here then did it, it'll do it, and it does it the same thing with the other channel too. We're gonna go over in a few minutes and go over how to test it with a multimeter, because this is probably what you're gonna have. You're not gonna have this here if you're trying to build this circuit. And I'm going to test, show you how to test it to tell if it's safe to hook up the hook up to your computer or not. To do that, since we're done with this, to do that, you got to have a voltage source. It doesn't really matter what the voltage is, as long as you don't go too high. You probably want to go 5, maybe 12 or so, or maybe test in between them two with two different voltages. And... You what what want to do is 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 put it on one player T, have it on one channel with one player T, go up and down with the knob and see if it stays. One knob goes higher, but not over one volt. The other one goes lower, but not over one volt. And if it does that, and that means that part's good. And then switch the player T and do it over again for that channel. And then if that, do it to the next channel and so on. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll unhook the oscilloscope here and hook up my power supply, my wooden one I bought it, I built together at Futures. So we'll test it with that one. Okay, got my power supply hooked up. Got it hooked up to there. Let's hook it up to the meter, which I should have just done earlier, but hang on. So basically, you want to have your power supply hook hooked up to. Your scope circuit, then your output from the scope circuit, which is your audio plug, your sound plug, whatever, you want to measure it between there. You want to go from ground. There I go, taking another damn picture. Carefully. I don't know, does it? It seems like it's not that sensitive to me when I'm touching it with my fingers, these probes. It's a little sensitive, not that much as a oscilloscope was. Man, was it sensitive. Taking another damn photo. So you're going to take, I can hold this. The audio plug here. You wanna wanna go from ground, which is the first, which is the first pin on the connector, to any one of the two of them. They depend on which one it's hooked to. So we're testing that one, the first one, which is on the white channel, channel two, and again, like, in fact, I'm gonna go over here and change the voltage down a little bit so we can see it even better. Four hundred and eighty-nine millivolts. I put it in the two thousand millivolt range so we can read the actual voltage here since it's not gonna go over like twenty volts or so or two or over one. So why would you put in twenty volt setting when testing it? 
a wine would come over the screen if it went over that setting, and and there'd be no, nothing in the left on the white channel of the white digits. To let you know that it's went up, it's went over the, that range. And if I go over there and flip that things, there we go, unhook it again. Hang on, just unhooked it. Okay, sorry about that. I had it hooked to the dead flash on my phone turned on. There it goes again. Yeah, it's, uh, and I think I'm recording upside down. Hope you can read it. See right there right now, I'm getting four point. If I can figure out a way to hold these probes onto this damn cord, everything be good. Well, I'll do it just this. I'll, I'll put it on the probes here. It says 400 and... 485, and that's on the white channel. And we're going to change the white channel. But it's turned another way. We'll turn it like that and see what we get. Be hundred and forty millivolts. It's all the way down. Zero. As you can see, one way that going all the way down the low signal that that decreases it very, very. Uh, that divides it a lot. That gives. I mean, we're further away from the positive. And. And that gives us down there to point, that gives us millivolts below it. Below one millivolt, so now if we turn it the other way, let's see if the other way does. I think we'll try it like that. I'll turn it up quite a few. So I'll make sure that this thing stays in the millivolt range. If it does not, you don't want to hook it up to the computer and break your computer or sound card. I think I did, did the wrong one. Yeah, I did. That gives us like 557 millivolts. And if I go up further to the last, to the top, the highest it goes, gives us a, gives us a total of 654 millivolts. So the white channel is doing good. Now let's change the voltage on it to so try it different voltages. We can decrease it or increase it. Now look, you might see over here over this side why is it in two mil two milliamps. That two milliamps is called could because we just told it we just we just uh Turned it down so low that there's very little resistance on the pot. But uh, but the thing is that shouldn't be a problem because because this resistor here will protect it from drawing too much. And two milliamps is not going to do anything to the circuit. I'm going to change it to. Got my got a 12 volt power supply hooked to it. Couldn't find my 24 volt, so we're gonna go up to maybe 10. I was like going up to 9 on it. Go we'll by 9, the highest it can go. And we're getting 3. 0.5 milliamps. This thing here is gonna is not that I have to tell you how good the appearance is gonna be. It's gonna be like an analog 
in, in, in analog voltmeter. It's not gonna, it's gonna be, be, be where you have different voltages, it's gonna have to have a different resistance. You know, it's not gonna be his, his the different ranges. This this seems like the yeah, most for division is these two pots. They're not they're not uh, switches. You could use switches to do it. That might that, that might be a better idea. But the thing is, that we, uh, it's not as easy as this would be. Plus, also you'd have to put protection on it. I think you could put it on there, put probably put the diodes in parallel for voltage divider and that would work. I never tried that because I always use this way to do it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to measure between... Between there... And there. So far I'm getting six point. No, I got my probes to touch it. Six point seven two. Then if I I wonder if I could do it with two hands. If I could just pop it up to something. If I change it to there, you will see how it goes down, 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 down to it's a zero. You see it, and, and if it does like that and go up, 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 and it doesn't go above one way, it doesn't go above it, and it, above the the voltage on. On, on that on above one volt and you're doing good. So that's one way of saying that this white channel here is good. Now let's do the left channel. Okay, I got the hook to this left channel of it and we're gonna see if we can can get something to come out of it once we get these, these probes here to hook from the multimeter to hook up and it's hard doing it with the with the camera because like I said it's so far right now I get six point sixty. No, six hundred and sixty millivolts. Which is good. Probably at the at the top because over there it says right now it says three point five milliamps of drawing on our power supply. Yeah, nine's close to ten. If you divide anything by ten, it's gonna put it's gonna move the dead, the decimal digit over. And that's why it's close to our resistance on it uh, and lower than lower than one. With three point three kilohms, it's doing from three point five milliamps. I to explain why we get that. It is close to 10 volts. So now I'm gonna get, if I can get hold in place, I can show you how we're gonna test, test it going the other way around. Since I think we're at full blast on it, 
usually if you're getting at the 600, 600 millivolts. You are in the correct range. If I'm trying to get to, there you go. That'll do. Which is left. This channel's left. Okay. As you can see, I'm turning the other way around. It's going down. And that's a good sign. That's gonna work. Then it goes down to zero. So it looks like for this thing here, I'm thinking higher the voltage you want the. What's the resistance? Let's see, the more resistance should be. I don't know. Anyway, that's a sign that it's going to work. And it's okay to put in the computer after they do that test on, on it and then it succeeds. Another thing is, well, I'm not using that. That white power supply, because you see, I know there's AC voltage on it. It's not, it's not going to be like an AC wave. It's going to have that curve on it with the, with the, the, the waveforms. It's going to curve like a curved square wave. The reason is, is the diode does that to it when it's clamped. So what I did, so that's why we, that's why we using that power supply over there instead of this one. It's like literally, like, there's no day program when I was outing, it's like, So. So that's why we're gonna. I found Jeff, he's a piece of video on the computer. So there we go. You then hook up the computer, which will do sometime soon, since since it's at Kim's house, the computer that has the sound card with the line in jack. Oh, so there it will allow you to measure the signals. The only ones I got are microphone ones, and they won't do good for what we want to do. The off, the off, I buy a lot. They have a voltage going into it. I don't, I'm, I don't know if the voltage is good for the dials or not. It may not. He'll get to a microphone for it. You might get somewhere if you pop in up one to do it like that. You try putting the capacity in, in front of it. But still, the microphone port is not, should not be used for, not be used for oscilloscope signals. And also right here, you see in my meter here, why it has a closing cap on it. Well, what Frank got it first, it worked for a while, then all of a sudden this, the, this whole piece right here come right off of it. And I had clicked it in another probe uh, that, didn't have, that had no other end on it. So I tried it, so I decided to strip it and then crimp it to, onto the wire, the same wire. And then I can't use regular probes, so they, cause if you look here, they made them kind of like Banana Jack, but they're shorter, as you'll see. And that's basically it. Thanks for watching if you like it.